initiating moisture. Welcome to the Moist Meter, Polygon's calling it the Dark Souls of game reviews. Today we're looking at Darksiders 3. Darksiders is a series that's very near and dear to my boners. I'm a big fan of the Darksiders series. I love the first two games, the first one more so than the second, and I was beyond shocked that this game even got released. Now, this game is getting absolutely fucking grilled by the micro dicked everything's problematic games journalists out there, and I don't think it's entirely warranted. This game has many, many problems, which I'll cover, but this game has something most modern games are lacking. Soul. Passion. Real passion put into the project. When you beat the fucking game, there's a, there's a message that says a special thanks to the fans and family members of the team who supported us in our pursuit to create awesome games. It was the most wholesome moment I've ever had in video games when I beat that shit and saw the credits roll. Nearly brought a goddamn tear to my eye. The game truly is a labor of love from the team. Uh, I really want the game to do well, even though I don't think it's a great game or anything. I would love to see more from Darksiders because I think this had a lot of potential. But due to the low budget and time constraints, it really did miss the mark, unfortunately. Of the three Darksiders games, this is easily the weakest. Uh, everything feels super rushed from the story to the gameplay to the characters. It really shows its low budget and time problems because, like, the lip sync is really bad. It's fucking abominable. The lip sync looks like straight out of a DOS box game from the late 90s. Uh, the story jumps all over the place. One second, Fury thinks humans are insects and hates them, thinks they should all die and she doesn't care. And then the next scene, she's all of a sudden giving a big fucking pep talk to the humans like a quarterback in the locker room hyping up his team before the big championship game. And there's nothing to connect those two points. All of a sudden, Fury will have a moment of self-reflection, but for no reason, there was no catalyst. Nothing that really brought that about. I think the team had a clear direction they wanted to take the story. Uh, but they couldn't get there. They couldn't flesh it out and develop it because they didn't have the time or the budget to do so. So instead you get these jarring transitions and nothing really connects. Also the gameplay gets really clunky. The dodging is really uh, picky with what they consider a perfect dodge and also what is even a dodge to begin with. The camera will actively do its best to fuck you in the asshole. The lock-on scarcely works, and when it does, it's not super helpful. It makes it a little bit more confusing when there's mobs. When there's mobs, you may as well just give up, start praying, because it all boils down to luck if you're going to survive the encounter. The game's difficulty is super high, but not like a Dark Souls way, like all the game all the game journalists are saying, like this is Dark Souls meets Darksiders or whatever the fuck. It's nothing like Dark Souls. The only thing that has in common is they're both hard games, but Dark Souls is hard but fair. Darksiders 3 is hard but unfair. There's no chance in some of the encounters when you get to them for the first time because there's nothing you can do about it. You wouldn't expect it. You'll just get jumped from someone around the corner and they'll two-shot you because almost everything two-shots you. A fucking enemy could fart on you and it'll take out half your health. And there's really just nothing you can do about it. You just have to sit there and get fucking beef stewed and stink-faced by the enemies because the dodging doesn't really work and there's no blocking. But all of this being said, all of these negatives... Darksiders 3 has this undeniable charm about it. It's a very old-fashioned kind of game from a time when games didn't have like a meta to stick to where it wasn't only big budget titles that had to play it safe where everything was just by the numbers, no risk taken. It comes from an era of games where developers would just throw a bunch of shit at the wall and hope something stuck. And that's when Darksiders was originally born and it still has that charm from back then. And I really appreciate that. The world is very nice. I think the art direction is fantastic. And it does have a good overarching story to tell, even though they didn't have time to flesh it out and really make you care all that much. It still has an interesting story to tell. Not as good as the previous two, but still good. I liked most of the characters. The dialogue at points got pretty fucking bad, though. The dialogue really tried to make Fury kind of edgy, but she just kind of came across as like an asshole edgelord. And not just her dialogue, pretty much all the dialogue in the game is not super great. There's some good lines here and there, but the strength of the, the writing comes from just the story and building the world. And I really appreciate that. I thought the boss design of the Seven Deadly Sins was spectacular. I thought each boss looked really fucking cool with a fun little move set and gimmicks to them. While the gameplay wasn't super tight, it was enjoyable at points. When it worked, it worked well. It's at its best when you're only fighting one enemy. When you're one-on-one, -on -one, you can get some cool moments and a good fight out of it. 
but even if there's two enemies, it's going to feel really unfair. It's going to feel like there's not a whole lot you can do about the, the situation unless you've leveled yourself up well or got really good enhancements. And the reason is mainly because when there's more than one enemy, the camera just doesn't know what to do with itself. And if you try and lock on, just fucking turn off the game because the lock on is awful in a 2v1 situation or more. You'll just start swinging at the air and it's going to be disorienting. The puzzles in this game I thought were actually very well thought out. Some of the puzzles took quite a bit of thinking and when you did solve it, it was like this nice eureka moment that felt good. Not as good as like Legend of Zelda or even the previous two games, but they were still nice and they're fun. I always enjoy puzzle solving shit in hack and slash games. And here, they were pretty well designed. Overall, I'd absolutely say I enjoyed the game and I'm super happy it got made and I really do hope it does well enough sales-wise to warrant a fourth installment into the series with a bigger budget and more time because this game showed a lot of potential to be great, but unfortunately it just couldn't get there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug this shit into the moist meter now. I'm giving Darksiders 2 a 60%. While it does have many flaws, I don't think any of them make a game unplayable or completely unenjoyable. There are definitely a lot of frustrating aspects about the game, however, I would recommend this one to anyone who enjoys hack and slash puzzle solving games or just wants a very challenging game. This one will definitely fucking test your patience, that's for sure. And overall, I do think it was a decently good game. So yeah, that's it. See ya.